Metro Manila, the national capital region of the Philippines, is the center of culture, economy, finance, education, and government of the country. It is the fourth richest city in the region and ranks among the upper 100 wealthiest cities in the world. With a gross domestic product of $192.6 billion which contributes to 44% of the country's economy, despite its small land area. The national capital region of the Philippines is rapidly growing. While its development and urbanization are well expanded beyond its city limits, from the core of the metro to its surrounding areas. The bustling mega-city is home to over 17 million people, in an area of less than 620 square kilometers, making the region one of the most densely populated metropolis in the world. However, challenges comes with development. Daily traffic congestion, overpopulation and pollution are the fundamental problems Metro Manila is facing, which curtailed the nation's potential growth. And this is spreading to the surrounding areas of Bulacan, Rizal, Laguna, and Cavite. Without a present solution, these problems will worsen as the population steadily increases from 23 million to 30 million for Mega Manila by the year 2030, becoming one of the largest megacities in Asia. With these in mind, the Philippine governments create a doable long-term integrated infrastructure development for Mega Manila, using transport as the catalyst for sustainable development, aims to provide solutions to traffic congestion and to enhance connectivity within Mega Manila. These are the top 10 biggest infrastructure projects in Mega Manila, which will transform the megapolis into a premier megacity in Asia Pacific, as the city regains its past glorious glory. The Metro Manila Subway Dubbed as the crown jewel of the Philippine mass transportation system, the Metro Manila Subway project construction is well underway. The tunneling works for the project crossed its point of no return last January 2023, and with it, the digging has been non-stop since. The subway project will cost the Philippines government up to 488.5 billion pesos or around $10 billion. The Japan International Cooperation Agency is set to fund 76% of the project via a 370.8 billion pesos loan package. The remaining 24% of the project cost, amounting to 117.7 billion pesos, will be paid for by the Philippine government. Underground works for the Metro Manila subway project is now expected to be operational by 2028, which can facilitate the drilling of 10 meters of tunnels per day. The MMSP will now have 17 stations spanning from Valenzuela City to FTI Intermodal Terminal in Paranaque, with a spur line that connects to Naya Terminal 3 in Pase and will cover a distance of 33 kilometers. Metro Manila subway will use the One Sustina product brand name for the next generation stainless steel train cars, featuring higher energy conservation, enhanced safety, and high maintainability. This brand has been adopted by multiple railway lines including the Yamanote line operated by East Japan Railway Company. The entire line will use 240 train cars, or 8 cars for 30 train sets, and will be manufactured and supplied by j Trek and Sumitomo Corporation, the leading train car manufacturer in Japan. The North-South Commuter Railway The North-South Commuter Railway is a 163-kilometer stretch of urban rail transit connecting New Clark City to Calamba with 37 stations, across central Luzon, the National Capital Region, and Calabarzo. According to the Department of Transportation, it will service over a million passengers daily and cut travel time from 4 to less than 2 hours. With funding from Japan International Cooperation Agency and Asian Development Bank, the NSCR has an expected cost of 873 billion pesos, which makes it the most expensive railway transportation project in Philippine history. The project is the biggest milestone of the Philippines rail system, as it will resurrect the once proud culture of rail transport in the Philippines, which has left it in a crumbling state. The NSCR corridor will provide interchange with all of the existing Metro Manila rail lines through the connection of MRT Line 9 of the Metro Manila subway. NSCR construction has been divided into three segments. Phase 2 is the Malolos Clark Railway projects, which will see developments of a 53 km north of the capital. Broadly following the century-old legacy railway, abandoned for several decades. NSCR projects include the 18 km northern extension, from Clark to New Clark City. Phase 1 of the NSCR package covers the 38 km central core, linking Totoban in Manila to Malolos City. 
This project was funded by Japan International Cooperation Agency. The southern section would be the 55-kilometer southern corridor connecting Blumentritt in Manila to Calamba City. This phase is worth up to 4.3 billion US dollars, and funded by Asian Development Bank. Sangli Point International Airport The development of the $11 billion Sangli Point International Airport has moved a step closer to reality, now that its private sector proponents have finally signed the development agreement with the local government of Cavite. With the signing of the agreement, the group is ready to commence the work necessary to finally implement the long-needed infrastructure project that aimed at providing a premium gateway that will initially serve as an alternative to the Ninoy Aquino International Airport. The consortium is ready to transform the airport into a premium gateway that can provide an alternative to the congested Ninoy Aquino International Airport. A reinvented convenient and world-class air travel experience. A catalyst for long-term national economic growth that will create thousands of new jobs. The new Sangli Point International Airport is a foundation of a world-class global hub airport. Adjacent to the heart of Metro Manila, key to the Philippines airport system, Clark International Airport, and New Manila International Airport in the north. By 2030, the airports in Mega Manila could accommodate up to 250 million travelers per year. Phase 1 of the project is expected to be operational by 2028. Meanwhile, the Phase 2 expansion will see the construction of a two-way runway system and the airport facility. Local members of the Airport Development Consortium are the Yuchenko Group of Companies, Cavitex Holdings Incorporated, and Lucio Tan's MacroAsia Corporation, which will provide management and technical services for the aviation support and logistics component of the project. Joining them are renowned global companies Samsung C and T Corporation of South Korea, Munich Airport International Limited Company, and the London-based design and engineering firm Root Group. New Manila International Airport San Miguel Aerocity Incorporated has reached at least 80% completion of land development for the New Manila International Airport. The builder of the soon-to-be largest gateway in the Philippines is accelerating land development with the goal of starting Civil Works 2024. The $15 billion Airport City Development Project is expected to start commercial operation by 2029. The Phase 1 of the project which includes a passenger terminal building with airside and landside facilities, an airport toll road, and one runway will facilitate around 35 million passengers a year. The new Manila International Airport located in Bulacan Province, north of Manila is set to become the main aviation gateway in the Philippines. The 2,500 hectares of the airport, will relieve the air traffic operations at the existing, and overly congested Ninoy Aquino International Airport. The gateway has a design capacity of 100 million but can be expanded to 200 million passengers a year, and is targeted to accommodate 240 aircraft movements per hour. Making New Manila International Airport, the biggest airport in Southeast Asia and the second biggest airport in the world. The new Manila Airport will include four parallel runways, a world-class terminal, and an infrastructure network such as expressways and railway line connections. The passenger terminal building will have a footprint of 350,000 square meters. It will include a departures hall, check-in hall, arrival hall, customs and immigration checkpoints, security checkpoints, boarding lounges, baggage handling area, and retail area. New Manila International Airport is part of the envisioned 12,000 hectares of Aerotropolis that features residential zones, commercial districts, government centers, a seaport, and an industrial zone. Developed by a local firm, San Miguel Corporation which was granted by the Philippines government a 50 years franchise that involves the construction, operation, and maintenance of Airport City. Bata and Cavite Interlink Bridge the Bata and Cavite Interlink Bridge is a 32-kilometer and 150-meters four-lane cable-stayed bridge, it will stretch 17 kilometers between Cavite and Corregidor Island, and more than 14 kilometers between Bata and Corregidor Island. The project will involve the construction of two cable-stayed navigation bridges, the North Channel Bridge, with a main span of 400 meters, and the South Channel Bridge with a 900-meter main span, standing at a water depth of approximately 50 meters. It will connect Bata and in the north, and Cavite in the south, the two adjacent provinces of Metro Manila. This cable-stayed bridge speeds up travel from 5 hours to just 30 minutes between Bata and in Cavite and is expected to serve as many as 30,000 vehicles per day. 
The enormous savings in time has spelled convenience for those engaged in business and trade in the region and has ensured sustained economic growth for both provinces. As another intervention to address Metro Manila's persistent problem with traffic congestion, the Bata and Cavite Interlink Bridge will introduce new expansion and economic growth opportunities outside of the metropolis. With investors now setting up industries, leading to the route of promising new land and marine viaduct highway to be built between regions of central Luzon and Calabarzo. The National Economic and Development Authority, NEDA, approved the project with a budget of 175.7 billion pesos. It will be financed through multilateral funding from the Asian Development Bank. The Metro Rail Transit 7 or MRT Line 7. To alleviate the traffic, MRT 7 is one of the visible solutions to solve the Philippine traffic. Which is now at 85% overall completion rate will support essential operations by 2025. These rail and road projects have three major components, a 22.8-kilometer mass rail transit system starting from North Avenue Common Station to San Jose del Monte Bulacan. When MRT 7 is completed, it will be able to carry 28,000 to 36,000 passengers in an hour per direction. It can accommodate up to 850,000 passengers a day which will help ease traffic at EDSA. In the future it will expand to Philippine Arena located in Ciudad de Victoria up to the new Manila International Airport. Adding 30.3 kilometers to the present line to 53.1 kilometers. The line will be operated with 108 rail cars in a three-car configuration or 36 train sets. The common station of Manila, or dubbed as Unified Grand Central Station, is a state-of-the-art, rapid transit terminal, and transportation hub along EDSA, located between SM City North and the Ayala Mall Trinoma. This unified station will feature a 13,700 square meters concourse area, which will seamlessly connect the rail lines of LRT Line 1, MRT Line 3, MRT Line 7, and MRT Line 9 of Metro Manila Subway. Aside from the rail lines, this common station will also connect to the EDSA bus carousel through the EDSA busway, and to the transportation hub terminals in the area. Once operational, the common station is expected to serve approximately 500,000 passengers per day, and can serve up to 1.5 million passengers daily, once the MRT Line 7 and MRT Line 9 will be fully operational. The capital of the Philippines has a persistent problem, living space for urban life. This makes reclamation a great option for creating living and community development space for the Filipino people. New central districts and urban developments are on the rise transforming the urban landscape of Metro Manila. Due to its limited land area, the Philippine government in partnership with local and international investors will develop new urban centers through land reclamation to expand its business district and develop a new growth center within the region. These are the biggest land reclamation projects in Metro Manila. Harbor City, dubbed as the Manhattan of Manila Bay, is a groundbreaking development project involving the reclamation of 265 hectares of offshore areas in Manila Bay to build a new cosmopolitan, eco-friendly, and iconic waterfront city. With its seven master plan districts, uniquely designed, and future-proof interconnected districts that put emphasis on work, life, and recreation, Harbor City will be the crown jewel of the Manila Bay Area when it rises above water by 2025 and is completed by 2028. Two components of the project will promote sustainability, blue infrastructure and green infrastructure. Blue infrastructure focuses on harnessing the fullest potential of Harbor City's waterways while green infrastructure emphasizes on revitalizing the ecology of Manila Bay through increased greenery. To date, the project has already reclaimed more than half of its land development area, a testament to the capabilities of PHCC and its EPC contractor Netherlands-based Royal Boscalus Westminster as one of the world's top dredging companies. The SM New Bay City of the Passe Reclamation Development Project in Manila Bay is a new and modern commercial and residential property development to be run by SM Prime Holding Incorporated. The project involves the reclamation of approximately 726 hectares through the construction of three artificial islands according to international standards to ensure a safe living environment. The islands have been designed to withstand potential large earthquakes. In addition, shore protection works are designed to withstand typhoons. A green inclusive city with open spaces, putting the Philippines at par with Hong Kong, 
Singapore, and Sydney. With a world-class transportation network and a CBD with fast connectivity to the airport and to the metro. The project already reclaimed the first two of the three islands of the developmental area. Boscalus, the dredging contractor already deployed a number of trailing suction hopper dredgers, over a period of two years including its mega hopper dredgers. The entire reclamation area will be compacted with vibro and dynamic compaction, to ensure soil stability. The outer perimeter of the islands will be protected with a combination of rock revetment and a concrete wave wall. Preparatory work is scheduled to commence immediately, and work on site was started in the first quarter of 2020. The reclamation activities are expected to be completed within three years, and the total project duration including land development is within five years. The Manila Waterfront City is a raw land reclamation and development project covering 318 hectares of foreshore and offshore areas in Manila Bay. The master plan is envisioned to be the next arts and cultural hub of the city, as part of the greater plan for the CCP complex area. Occupying over 23 acres of prime waterfront land fronting the Bay of Manila, the development comprised over 92,903 square meters of retail space, a 52-story serviced apartment tower, a boutique hotel, office spaces, floating pavilions, and restaurant, and a series of public spaces which will include a festival plaza, viewing deck, public park, a Zian garden and a stretch of 800 meters of the pedestrian waterfront boulevard. Inspired by the manifestation of a grandeur rice terrace of North Luzon and the cultural heritage of the Filipinos, it has been interpreted into the undulating stepping features of the building masses. The sleek and waving elements have created an uninterrupted view and unique space character. Whilst emphasizing the gist of the Manila waterfront city conceptual design, the project already reclaimed more than half of its developmental area. One of the contractors of the projects is China Communications Construction Company, which the United States raised concerns. In 2020, the U.S. blacklisted China state-owned enterprises responsible for militarization and coercion in the South China Sea.